Hello. Oh, wait. Hello, hello. Okay, I think it's working. Wow, that's really close. Let me see if I can scoot back a little bit. Hello, hello, Spruce Society. Sorry. Every time I try to go live from my laptop, it is, it's just different than doing it from my phone, and it takes me a hot minute. So, anyway, good morning and happy Wednesday, you guys. How are you? We are on the downhill side of the month. Who is going to finish strong these last nine days? So can you share with me as you join in or when you watch the replay, if you could um, share with me in the comments, what do you guys have planned for the rest of the month? Or maybe share with us a win that you've had this month. I know that we all would love to celebrate with you your wins, so share them in the comments. Um, people love to see ideas of what people are doing to finish out their month strong, so I would love it if you would share that with us in the comments. So. Um, there are some of us though who have been feeling stuck, maybe uninspired in a bit of a holding pattern. Um, there are so many reasons that this can happen. So maybe you felt tripped up by COVID and you are like, aren't sure how to get back in the game. Um, maybe you've just been distracted and disheartened by um, some of the drama that's been around lately. Um, or maybe you've slipped into management mode and you, you realize now that it's time to maybe pull yourself out of that. Or maybe you've just felt uninspired lately. Um, so that's okay. Uh, this business or any business is full of mountains and valleys. And when things are going really well, you guys, it's really fun, isn't it? And then when things slow down and you get in that valley, it can feel like work. So if you are new to this business and you are watching this and you're on like the top of the mountain right now and things are going great, then I want you to know that I and everyone in here, we are cheering you on. Um, but just like any business, a valley comes. It will come. And it doesn't have to be like the valley of death, okay? I'm not speaking death. It's just a place of slowdown, a place where the momentum kind of slows down and you're like, maybe some of the things that you were doing that were working so easily before aren't and you're kind of having to like um, reevaluate what you've been doing and how you can move forward to kind of start that uphill swing again. Um, so this is a good time to ask yourself some questions um, that will help to propel you to the top of the mountain. So in the beginning, when I first started doing this business, I remember feeling like I just wanted somebody to tell me what to do, okay? Like if someone would just say, here, here are these things um, that you need to do, go and do them and success will come. It would have been great, like I was looking for that. Um, I think a lot of people are and were looking for that because um, because it's easier, right? Like, just tell me what to do and I will do it. Um, so instead I went to conference after conference and, um, you know, retreat after retreat. And I kept hearing the same things about like finding your why and who is your ideal customer. And I remember feeling frustrated because I would be like, I know my why, I just need the how, right? And so fast forward now, nine years, um, and I understand that, um, that that mindset work, it was definitely key. Like that was an important piece. It is important to know your why. It is important to think about who your ideal customer is because these things like getting your mindset right, that's the key to sticking around when things get tough because again, the mountains and the valleys are going to come no matter what. Um, so when you're in that valley, it's easy to like take the exit ramp right off if you do not know what your why is, why you're doing this, and why you're sticking around. So that work was important and is important. Um, but what I am now realizing is that we are actually innately smart and innately creative. And really, everything that you need to do is already in, inside of you. Okay? Um, we all have that. I just wasn't sure like what questions I should be asking. So I would hear things like, ask yourself questions. And I would be like, okay, what question? I don't even know what questions to ask. So um, I recently listened to a coaching call and it ignited a spark for me. And so in turn, I just wanna share, um, share it with you. It's pretty quick. Um, this isn't gonna be a long live. I'm gonna respect your time, but honestly, it's kind of quick and straight to the point. So, um, 
I, I'm going to ask, I'm going to tell you question one, but I want you to type in the comments the first thing that comes to mind when I ask you this question. Like the very, you're just your gut reaction. Like as soon as I say this, something is going to pop into your brain and I want you to share that with us. Or if, if you don't want to, you can keep it to yourself. But I feel like if you guys would just share that in the comments, you'll see that a lot of people probably have the same answer or similar answers. Um, so, or it might help springboard some people. So, um, question one. Um, and also I want you to know that you can, you can sit and think through this. Like it's, I want you to give me your gut reaction, but it's okay to sit, sit with this question and think it through and give it some time. Okay, here it is. What is something that you know you should or need to be doing in your business, but you are avoiding it? It's just really that simple. I'm going to ask it again. What is something that you know you should or need to be doing in your business, but you are avoiding it? So whatever it is, we don't have to spend a lot of time on it. And you need to dig in and get uncomfortable and do whatever that thing is, because likely that's the thing that's going to move you forward. So when I heard this question, I was like, oh, step to the heart, right? Because I knew in immediately the thing that I have been avoiding that I know I need to do to move forward. And so I was like, oh, I need to share this because if this um, gives me this reaction, it's going to give somebody else the same reaction. It's going to help them also to move forward. Sorry, I got my water in here. Okay, so question two. So maybe when I asked you question one, you didn't have an initial answer because you feel like you're doing all the things already. You're like, I'm doing all the things. There's nothing that I'm avoiding. Um, I would encourage you to sit with question one because I have a feeling if you keep digging, you will find that there is something that you're not doing. But let's just say you're like, I feel like I'm doing all the things. I'm just not feeling any movement. So I want you to ask yourself this. Am I compelling? Am I showing up in a way that makes people feel compelled to buy from me. So when I heard that, I was like, hmm, that's interesting. So um, to unpack that a little bit, I want you to know that there's nothing wrong with you. And there's nothing really wrong with your customer, right? It's just that we need to kind of marry the two things together. It's not, it's, it's that they're, they're not compelled to buy from you and you need to ask yourself and sit with, why is that? Why is, why, I'm putting this content out here, but there's no movement. So why is that? What is it that you can think about specific people if you want to, or you can just think of them as a group. What is it that they could be thinking or feeling that is holding them back from, from purchasing oils from me? So is it that they, um, maybe they think they don't need it, or maybe they um, they clicked and they saw the price and they're like, oh, that's too expensive. And so they don't understand the value. So whatever it is that your um, potential customers are watching your content and they're possibly thinking that's holding them back, that your job is to switch it around. And instead of just putting, um, oh, let me show you. Y'all know what this is? This is the old school Valor that I brought out for this talk today. Um, <laughs> Because I need it. Um, okay, sorry. That was a squirrel moment there. Um, so they're they're clicking the button. They're seeing the price. They're like, oh, that's just that's just too much. Like I, I can I saw those oils over at um, Target, or I saw some oils at TJ Maxx, and I'm just I'm just gonna get those. Or I went on Amazon and whatever. Okay, you get it, right? So some people think that maybe they're too expensive, but what they're not understanding is the value. So there's a reason that you and me, that we are choosing to use these products, right? We're choosing to use these products for a reason. And that's because we see the value in them. We know and understand the value. And so in your content, you need to be addressing this. You need to be sharing the value of our product. So this happens every day, you guys, in commercials. If you just kind of start paying attention, you will see that commercials are already thinking about the reasons that you don't, um, that you would you would have for not purchasing their product, and they're already addressing and answering that for you in their little 30 seconds. And so you need to be doing that in your content. So um, the things that are holding them back. So 
uh, one way that you could do that, and I love this, this was um, something I heard. So I see sometimes, and I am very guilty of this, I will tend to refer to people who use other oils, or not to the people, but I refer to those oils as garbage oils. Okay, that is something that I need to stop doing. And I need to stop doing that because when I refer to those oils as garbage oils and I have a friend who is using, the, the she, they're using those oils, when I call them garbage, that's like an attack on them. It's like kind of shaming them a little bit that they've chosen to use these less than oils. So instead of coming to it from that angle, instead come to it from the angle of don't call them garbage, right? Actually, I bought oils other than Young Living first and they didn't work. And that is when I learned the value. So that's a story I could be sharing about how I tried this other thing and it didn't work for me, but maybe come at it from the point of, here are three reasons to switch from your drugstore oils to Young Living and talk about the value of Young Living. Um, another thing about becoming compelling is to go ahead, you guys, put yourself out there. Why, when there are so many people that people could purchase their oils from, why should they buy from you? What is it that you bring to the table that's different from someone else? And that is something for you to sit and think through. That's not for me to tell you what that is because we are, we all bring something different to the table and we are all right for someone. I am not right for everybody that's out there, but I'm right for some people that are out there and I wanna attract those people to me. An example that I give for this, um, I have a rental cabin in Pigeon Forge and my rental cabin is not enough to host every single person that comes to Pigeon Forge area, right? I could never host all of those people. It's impossible. And so there is enough. There's enough business to go around. There's enough business to go around in this oil business as well. I, at my cabin, want to attract a certain customer. I want to help a certain person. I want to help families. I want to help, you know, well, my cabin is specifically geared more for groups and families um, with children. There are some people who make their cabins so that it is not attractive to people with children. There are people that have smaller cabins that are not attractive to groups. And that's okay because different people are all coming. And so you are, I hope that's making sense. Like we can't serve everyone, but we can serve the people that are right for us. And we do that by putting out our truth and putting out what is true about us and what do I have to offer. It's not a competition. Just because I am different than this person over here or this leader over here, it's not a competition, right? Like I, it's okay that they're gonna attract different people, but there is something that I bring to the table that someone needs, and I need to be bold enough to share that in my content, to put that out there in my stories, to put that out there in my posts, so that those people will then be compelled to buy from me. So question one, just to recap is, um, what is it something that you are that you know you should be doing in your business, but you're avoiding it? And question two is, am I compelling? Am I showing up in a way that makes people compelled to buy from me? And then question three is, am I meeting new people and growing my audience? And you guys, this is the one that I feel like when I talk to my people, when I talk to other, um, when I talk to my own people, when I talk to crossline people, this is the biggest thing that I think people are forgetting to do. Or this is the thing that they're super uncomfortable with because they feel like I'm being salesy. They, I, they're going to know that I'm only trying to talk to them because I want to sell them something. Okay, we well, need to throw that out because that shouldn't be the only reason that you are trying to talk to them. You guys, it is great to grow your audience for a number of reasons. It isn't just for this business. It's about networking in life in general, okay? Like the more people you meet, the more skills that people have, the more people that they know that they can connect you with for all types of things in this world. <clears throat> It's important to be growing your audience for a number of reasons. It is not just a selfish selling reason, okay? But if you are in this business to grow, it is your job, like this is part of your job to, um, to, to meet new people and to grow your audience. Like it's network marketing, you need to grow your network. Okay, so the example I'm gonna give you here, <clears throat> and this is something that I do a lot, if I feel stuck or I feel like I'm not sure what to do, I try to think of myself as a brick and mortar business, right? Just uh, just a regular boutique, restaurant, whatever you wanna think about. Um, I think about that and what do those people do, okay? So a restaurant, let's just say I'm gonna open up a restaurant. 
Okay, the first thing is I'm probably not going to be open only two days a week for three hours at a time. Now, I'm not saying you guys have to work eight hours a day every single day. I'm not saying that. But you you can't just like throw show yourself up on social media or put your content out there like once a week or twice a week and believe that that's enough. You've got to be consistent in throwing it out there, right? So if I'm opening a restaurant, I'm going to make sure that I'm putting my content out there, that I'm open um, for business. And so I have my grand opening and I have 100 people come that day. It's amazing. Um, you know, people are eating, they're buying my food, they're raving over it. And I'm like, this is amazing. Like I surpassed my goal for the day. This is awesome. Okay, I'm not going to sit on my laurels and then believe that those 100 customers are going to be the same ones that come back every single day to eat at my restaurant. That's not going to happen. That's not realistic. I need to always be putting myself out there and sharing myself so that other people, new people, will come to my restaurant. And I want to do such a great job that the people who do come to my restaurant go out and tell people about my restaurant. I want to create raving fans. So when you have people come to you, you want to give them excellent customer service so that they will then, in turn, rave about you to someone else. Oh, you're having trouble sleeping? Me too. And my friend Sherry gave me the most amazing product and she blah, 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 blah right? Get the referral. So are you meeting new people and growing your audience? Because the same, you know, 10, 15, 20 people that you enrolled in the very beginning of your business, whether it was two years, three years, five years, nine years ago, um, some of those people are going to still be around, but a lot of them are not. We always need to be growing and moving and enrolling new people. And so to do that, we have to be growing our audience. So how can you do that? Um, think about if you want to throw in the comments, um, if you've been meeting new people and you've found a new way um, to do that, I would love it if you would share that in the comments. But I'm going to give you just a few examples. I want you to think about things that you are interested in. So you want this to be genuine, right? You want to be authentic and genuine. This is not fake. And you want to think about things that you are truly interested in. So um, one thing is to join groups on Facebook of things that interest you, right? So if you like to knit, I know there's groups for that. If you like to RV or camp, there are groups for that. If you um, own a certain type of dog, there are groups of people who own that, like um, I have a Rhodesian Ridgeback, there are groups for Rhodesian Ridgeback owners. If you like to garden, if you, uh, y'all, the sky's the limit. Like there is a group for anything and everything out there under the sun. And so if it falls in your area of interest, join those groups. Now, when you join the group, don't just join the group and sit back, comment, be a part, offer advice, offer, you know, provide value in that group for whatever it is. Like if you, um, if it's about knitting, y'all know nothing about knitting and crocheting, but like if it's about that and you know something about yarn that somebody's asking or hooks or y'all, I have really, I have no idea. I shouldn't have ventured into that. But if you know something about that, share that knowledge, be a value, be a name that they see come up over and over. Um, when you see people comment in there that are offering value and you're like, dang, I mean, she just gave the greatest advice. I want to, you know, I want to get to know her. Friend people in these groups, okay? Um, comment on, find, um, so that's Facebook. Go on Instagram, search on Instagram. Again, I have a Rhodesian Ridgeback. I can search Rhodesian Ridgebacks of Instagram. I can go follow, you know, search that hashtag, find some people that I like their content, follow them, comment, engage. Now, Obviously, I you have to know that this is the work that it takes, and this isn't like an instantaneous, I'm gonna go join this group, make a comment, boom, I'm gonna get new oily customers. No, this is just part of the work that it takes. And this, um, again, I have to remind myself about the cabin. Sometimes I go to the cabin, I get there, and there are so many things wrong. If I could just sit here and tell you all the things that have gone wrong lately, like refrigerator, oh, my cabin is sinking right now. That's a problem. So I have all these problems, right? Sometimes I show up and it's like, oh my gosh, and my husband's like, sell it. I'm like, no, we have to remember that we get paid from this and therefore I have to put in work for it, right? Like it's okay that when I show up, there's work that has to be done, work that makes me sweat, work that is um, mentally exhausting, work that takes time. It's okay that I'm putting in the work because I am getting rewarded for it. And so I think it's important to remember that this is a business 
um, sometimes I think we think of it maybe as our little side thing, but if we need to have the business mindset and we need to know that there's work that has to be put in, sometimes it feels sweaty and uncomfortable, but in the end we will get paid and it's amazing. So those are my three questions. If you are feeling stuck um, to help propel yourself, to get yourself moving, what am I not doing that I know I should be? Um, what am I compelling and showing up in a way? Am I providing value? Am I showing the value of my product? And number three, am I meeting new people and growing my audience all the time? And then I'm just going to, on my way out, share this. Um, if you have just been feeling uninspired, I want you to th either think back to somebody that you helped solve a problem with your oils or think back to something um something that has happened um, in your own life. Maybe you had a prescription that you're no longer on or a thing that happened to you in, in, your, um, in your health that was a problem that no longer is a problem because of the products that you use. These are the things that always inspire me because it goes back to my true love is to helping people. Helping people, um, helping people to solve problems and to make their life easier and better. Like that sets my soul on fire. I love it when somebody has a problem, they come to me, I give them a solution and they come back to me and be like, oh my gosh, I can't believe that this worked. Like that makes me so happy inside. And so anytime you are feeling uninspired, I encourage you to go back to that. Either help someone right now, just out of the goodness of your heart, just give them no strings attached, whatever it is that they need to help themselves. And you are going to feel good about that. And then also you can think back to your own, um, your own good stories or just go read a testimonial. I heard um, somebody tell this weekend over that like their story of all the things that they had going on in their life and then how they used Young Living to help overcome them. It was so inspiring. So anyway, I hope that helps you today. Happy Wednesday. My Mac is not plugged in and it's about to die. So I am going to head out and um, thanks for listening guys. Now I don't know how to stop it.